Hello there students, welcome to a new video for Introduction to Spreadsheets. In this video we're going to take a, another look at a function that is capable of making decisions. In previous videos we took a look at the if function, which is probably one of the most popular functions that deals with decision making. The next one is not as popular, and I'll be honest with you, I don't use it um, the majority of the time, but every now and again it is something that is beneficial, so I wanted to demonstrate it to you. This particular function is called the choose function, and I want to demonstrate what it does. The choose function, let's just start with the function here. What I have is a situation where I have report cards and report card grades, and then I have a report card common, and many of you probably have noticed that on your report card, instead of printing out the uh, exact code or the exact comment on your report card, we, we provide a code and then we provide a key as well that you can use to look it up. Well, in this particular case, what I'd like to do is to be able to add these comments to these particular students, but rather than typing them out or copying and pasting them and putting them here, what I want to do is be able to just type the comment out here and have that, uh, or type the code here and then use the uh, choose function to actually choose the correct comment and place it here. So th that's exactly what I want to do and let's take a look at how we can implement that. The first thing that we need is what is called an index. Now the index is a well the index itself is a word that we use to reference a position in a list of things. So what we're asking our spreadsheet to do is choose one item from a list of however many things that we have. In this particular case, I have a list of six comments, so I'd like it to choose one of those. So the index is actually the position in the list, the item that I want. Now, in this particular situation, my comments are listed from one to six, and that works out very well because one is the very first index and six will be the very last index. So what I'm asking the spreadsheet to do is look at my comment code and if you see a two there, that's the index, I want you to go pick whatever comment is at index two of my list. So whatever comment is actually in position two, I want you to go get that. That's what the index means. So you see the first value of the choose function is the index itself. Then you'll notice some other values. You see value 1 and then an ellipsis and value 30. So essentially what we're allowed to do here is now we list what all of our values are. So what is the first value? What is the second value? What is the third value in the list? In this particular case, I have six values. So I'm going to list six different possible values. What the choose function is going to do is it's going to look at that first, that index value, and it's going to say, hey, if that's a three, I'm going to look for the third value in my list. If it's a six, it's going to go to the sixth value in the list, and it's going to pull that out. So let's see how this works. I'm going to use the comment code that is contained in column D. So I'm going to reference D7 here, and then I put a comma. And now what I do is I put the very first value in the list. And I'm going to reference this, val this uh, cell right here, H8. Then I put a comma and I put the second value in the list. And that's in H9, comma, the third value in the list, that's this, fourth value, comma, fifth value, comma, sixth value. So let's close that off. And what I can see here is the choose function took this code, 1, and it looked for the first value in that list. So the first, this is my index and this is my list. The first thing in my list was H8, so it went to H8. Now you see I have these codes over here. You notice I'm not actually using them at all. They're just for display purposes. But the choose function is going to pick the correct one based on how I set it up. So if I decided to change this individual's comment code from a 1 to a 2, then the choose function now is going to help me pick out the right comment. So this is a nice way to be able to manipulate a list of values by adding just a code 
and then using the choose function to pick the right one. However, there are some things that could throw us off a little bit, so let's take a look at some of those things. First thing is, we would normally uh, copy this particular list down, or this fun formula down, so that it fills in for all the rest of the students. And we can see here that it did seem to work for some of them, but we have a couple blanks here. But if we look even closer, we notice this 5 corresponds to conference requested. And that's actually comment 6. And you see here we have comment 4, and that comes up empty. Comment 2 here is also conference requested. This comment 3 is actually homework incomplete. So something went wrong here. What happened? Well, let's take a look at the function in this row. We can see here that the D9 is correct, but look at these other cells. It's actually referencing H10 all the way down to H15. Ah, what happened? Well, it shifted all of these cell references down because we forgot to use absolute cell references. Instead of actually putting H8, I need to put dollar signs around that. So I'm actually going to, I'm hitting F4 on my keyboard. When I put the cursor over the cell reference, I hit F4. And what most spreadsheets do is they toggle back and forth between the different absolute and relative natures of those cells. Uh, if you're a little confused about that, I would encourage you to go back and look at the video that we did before on absolute versus relative cell references. All of my values are in column H, so I actually don't need to worry about the dollar sign on the H, but I definitely need to worry about the dollar sign on the row because I want these rows absolute. I don't want them shifting down the row but I'm just going to put the dollar signs on all of them. Now when I do that, all of my values or my comments in the list are absolute. And if I hit enter, I get the correct one at the beginning. And then when I copy it down, you can see I'm still dealing with the same set of cells. And now, I have an appropriate list of comments. And again, if I go in and edit someone's, then it should pick up the right thing. Now, some people, when they deal with the choose function first, um, or the, for the first time, they say, well, this is kind of weird, putting all these values in as a list. I mean, we did this in the sum function when we were first learning about it. Why not just take this out and just do a range of cells? Wouldn't that make a whole lot more sense? So if I just copy the range and make that absolute, wouldn't that make more sense? Well, let's see. Oh, look at this. What's this all about? We get this value. Error, argument out of range. Now, if you're using Excel, you might see something different, but I want you to notice that this actually is an inappropriate way to use the choose function. It doesn't work this way. Uh, what would happen is if it would work well for the first one, excellent effort, because basically what it's going to do is use this as the first item in the list, the whole thing. And the first thing it finds is ex excellent effort. The problem is if I put a 2, there is no second item in the list. So it actually says argument out of range, 2. There is no second value in the list. So that was a problem. So I really can't do it that way. So I'm actually going to copy that back. But it also leads us to another important point. What if you do type a value that's out of range? What if I type 7 here? Oh, that means the value is out of range. So there is no seventh comment. There was no seventh reference in my list. If I did want to add a seventh one, I would have to actually change this formula structure to add a seventh comment at the end. 